Good morning and welcome. The intentions for today's Mass are Ivanka Kova Suzak and Tony Maki. The Lord became my protector. He brought me out to a place of freedom. He saved me because he delighted in me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your My brothers and sisters, as we gather for the Eucharist this morning, we find Jesus out in the boat to be safe from the pressing crowds looking for healing. We press upon him at this altar to receive his healing gifts, so we can now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule, and that your church may rejoice untroubled in her devotion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. While the armies were coming home, when David returned from killing the Philistine, the women came out of all the towns of Israel, singing and dancing, to meet King Saul with tambourines, with songs of joy, and with musical instruments. And the women sang to one another as they made merry, Saul has killed his thousands, and David his ten thousands. Saul was very angry, for this saying displeased him. He said, They have ascribed to David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed thousands. What more can he have but the kingdom? So Saul eyed David from that day on. Saul spoke with his son Jonathan and with all his servants about killing David. But Saul's son Jonathan took great delight in David. Jonathan told David, my father Saul is trying to kill you. Therefore, be on guard tomorrow morning. Stay in a secret place and hide yourself. I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where you are, and I will speak to my father about you. If I learn anything, I will tell you. 
Jonathan spoke well of David to his father Saul, saying to him, The king should not sin against his servant David, because he has not sinned against you, and because his deeds have been of good service to you. For he took his life in his hand when he attacked the Philistine. And the Lord brought about a great victory for all Israel. You saw it and rejoiced. Why then will you sin against an innocent person by killing David without cause? Saul heeded the voice of Jonathan. Saul swore, as the Lord lives, he shall not be put to death. So Jonathan called David and related all these things to him. Jonathan then brought David to Saul, and he was in his presence as before. The word of the Lord. The response, in God I trust, I am not afraid. Be gracious to me, O God, for people trample on me. All day long foes oppress me. My enemies trample on me all day long, for many fight against me. In God I trust, I am not afraid. You have kept count of my tossings. Put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your record? Then my enemies will retreat in the day when I call. In God I trust, I am not afraid. This I know, that God is for me. In God, whose word I praise. In the Lord, whose word I praise. In God I trust, I am not afraid. What can a mere mortal do to me? In God I trust, I am not afraid. My vows to you I must perform, O God. I will render thank offerings to you. For you have delivered my soul from death and my feet from falling, so that I may walk before God in the light of life. In God I trust, I am not afraid. Jesus Christ has done away with death and brought us life through the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus departed with his disciples to the sea, and a great multitude from Galilee followed him. Hearing all that he was doing, they came to him in great numbers. From Judea, Jerusalem, Idumea, beyond the Jordan, and the region around Tyre and Sidon. Jesus told his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd, so that they would not crush him. For he had cured many, so that all who had diseases pressed upon him to touch him. Whenever the unclean spirits saw Jesus, they fell down before him and shouted, You are the Son of God. But he sternly ordered them not to make him known. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Some 30 years ago, a 
somewhat avant-garde but popular song came out about a man giving a graduation address. It was entitled, Wear Sunscreen, because he felt that was the most practical advice he could give. But it gave other pieces of wisdom, including this one. Don't look at fashion magazines, they'll only make you feel ugly. Which is, I think, certainly true. When we start comparing ourselves to other people, usually bad things, particularly envy, can result. And that's what happens with King Saul today. It seems cured for a little while, but as we know, it comes back to him. He cannot handle the fact that David did a good thing and people are praising him. He's getting more praise than, than Saul, and that makes Saul envy. Uh, comparison is never a good road, spiritually speaking. But this seems to happen a lot, doesn't it? There was a, a movie of that same time period, 1989, for those who like uh, British uh, directors and actors, Terry Gilliam and Eric Idle, even Robin Williams were in a film called The Adventures of Baron Munchausen. Not a popular film, but a deeply spiritual film. And in it, the, music, the musician Sting, Gordon Sumner, plays a soldier. A soldier who destroyed eight enemy cannon and released ten of their prisoners from the enemy. And he's brought to the commandant for a commendation. And the commandant says, take him away and execute him. Of course, he's shocked. But the commandant says, you know, by doing such great acts, he's making the ordinary soldiers feel bad. They're not doing the same things. Comparison can be a deadly thing. Happens all the time. Mostly with politicians, doesn't it? I've seen politicians squirm, particularly in the States, when they're asked at the end of the debate, say something good about your opponent. Because God knows you can't say something good about your opponent. You want to beat them. Comparison can be a deadly thing. No, our, our Lord invites us to a different place. A different place that, as the psalmist says, I trust in God. I'm not going to fear. Someone else's giftedness is not going to be a, a fear of mine because I accept who I am. I know I have a gift and a part to play. Some persons might be bigger, better, different. Comparison is always never good, spiritually speaking. Different is the best way to describe it. And our differences, when we unite them as a community, can always be a great strength because no one has all the gifts needed for a community, but together we discover we have all we need. As Jesus went out to preach the good news, people came to him and he did many good deeds. There were those who, probably because of comparison and envy, the Pharisees and the scribes and other characters throughout the scriptures, who denigrated Jesus and wanted to destroy him for the good that he did. We shouldn't be surprised at this. But we are called to a different perspective, a different life. We come here as the ones who celebrate our Lord for his great gifts of healing. And in doing so, we thank him for the gifts that he has given us in ourselves and in each other. And perhaps I think this perspective can be best summed up by the wisdom of St. Therese of Lisieux, who in contemplating the challenge to love us as God loves us, is one of the characteristics is to celebrate every virtue and good that we see in the other. So may our Lord in this Eucharist fill us with his goodness that we can celebrate virtue wherever we see it, in ourselves or more importantly in each other, and not be threatened by others' giftedness, but say with the psalmist, I trust in the Lord. I have no fear.
Let us offer our prayers and petitions to God, asking that in his mercy he may hear us. For leaders of the church, may God continue to bless them in guiding her people. Let us pray to the Lord. For all public authorities and leaders of nations and governments, that the Lord may inspire them to seek first the welfare of their people. We pray to the Lord. For all those who feel defeated in whatever their daily battles are, may the Lord console and strengthen them. I ask us especially to pray for my cousin Johnny, who will be undergoing open-heart surgery in these next few days. We pray to the Lord. For those in our community who lack food, clothing, or shelter, may the Lord meet their needs through the dedication of others. We pray to the Lord. For the souls of the faithful departed, we especially pray for the intentions of this Mass, Ivanka Kovasuzak and Tony Mackey. May they, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Good and gracious Father, we trust in your kindness and compassion. We ask that you hear our prayers, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who provide gifts to be offered to your name, and count our oblations as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion, we ask of your mercy that what you grant as the source of merit may also help us to attain merit's reward through Christ our Lord. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, 
heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gerard, our Bishop, and all the other clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the other saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age, says the Lord.
Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal through Christ our Lord. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.